Why do we need data transfer objects? Why can't we just reuse the model in our domain layer as our data transfer object? So that's a bit of a loaded question. Let's dig into what these terms mean. So a model is a domain object. It represents some sort of domain concept and it captures domain logic. While a data transfer object on the other hand, also known as a DTO, we'll probably call it a DTO from here on. A DTO defines the schema and represents the data that gets passed from our system to another system, such as from our application to a database. Now, sometimes people will use models as DTOs. So they'll have a single class that represents their domain object and their DTO. While other times people will have separate objects for their domain model and their DTO. And I actually do the same exact thing on my channel. Sometimes I'll have a separate DTO object and sometimes I won't and I'll just reuse the model object. And that's actually why this whole thing is confusing. And I actually got a comment asking, how come sometimes you use DTOs and models as separate classes, but other times you don't? So essentially the question is, when should I use a separate DTO class rather than just reusing my existing domain model class? And as always with software development, the answer is, it depends. So rather than giving a concrete answer, let's dig into the benefits and drawbacks of extracting a separate DTO rather than reusing a model class as a DTO. So let's start off with the benefits of having a separate DTO class. The first benefit is that you can add objects to your domain model class without impacting your data transfer object. Pretty straightforward, but if you're using the same class as a domain model and a DTO, and say you add a property that's meant to be used as just something in your domain that you don't want to transfer to another system or store in the database, then you might inadvertently create like a database column for this new property, or you might expose this property through like an API response when really you just want to keep that internally in your domain. So that kind of leads to the next benefit where you can structure and represent your domain model without being restricted by the simplicity that DTOs usually represent. So typically a DTO is just a big object of properties with getters and setters that get used whenever you're mapping data between systems. And you usually need to expose all of this data via getter and setter properties in order for the mapping to even work. But you might not want to expose all of these properties and all of the getters and setters in your domain object. So when you have separate DTOs and domain objects, you can have a DTO with all of the getters and setters, no big deal. And then you can have a very encapsulated domain object that only exposes the data that is needed for your domain. Another benefit of having a separate model class and DTL is that you're not gonna be cluttering a single class with a bunch of attributes that might only be related to either a DTO or your domain object. So a good example of this is any framework attributes such as the key attribute or the required attribute or other validation attributes. You're not gonna be cluttering a single class. So your model is not gonna be cluttered with attributes that are only related to a DTO. Instead, you can just apply those to your separate DTO class. And that benefit is kind of opinionated. Some people might not care about cluttering their class with attributes, which leads us to the final benefit. This one's also kind of opinionated, but I find it helpful to have a separate DTO class so that you have a single source of truth to understand what data is getting passed between systems. So when you have a separate DTO class, you can look at that DTO and know exactly what properties are getting passed between your system. So the separate DTO class kind of acts like a schema. It's easy to read and it's a source of truth for how your data is transferred. So that pretty much lays out the benefits. Let's get into drawbacks because there are a few. Again, this is not a clear cut decision for one approach versus the other. So the first drawback is complexity. You're gonna have more objects. You're gonna have basically two objects for every sort of domain concept. The other drawback is mapping. So since you have multiple objects, you are gonna have to map back and forth between your domain object and your DTO. Sometimes this isn't too bad, but sometimes you might face some complex mappings that can be a pain to work with. And in the end, it is more code that you have to maintain. And the last drawback, and this kind of depends on how your project is structured, but you're gonna have more layers. So you're gonna have a layer that contains your DTOs and another layer that contains your domain object. And the annoying part with layers is that they're annoying to traverse through. And also whenever you wanna add like a new field to a domain object, you're also gonna have to look for the corresponding DTO to add the field there as well. 
And then you'll also have to update all of the mapping logic too. So in the end, it's more complexity and it's more stuff that you're gonna have to maintain. Now, even though there's not a clear cut answer on whether or not you should use a separate DTO class, now that we understand the benefits and drawbacks, we can kind of weigh these against actual examples. So a good example of when I would not use a separate DTO class and I would just reuse a single class as the domain model and the DTO is when I'm dealing with a simple domain. An example of this would be like a CRUD application where there's not really much domain logic that would benefit from being in a separate object and you're not losing out on the encapsulation benefits of having a separate domain object. Another use case for using the same object for your DTO and domain object is when you're working in an anemic domain model. So an anemic domain model, there's like blog posts on what this means, but it essentially means that your domain objects don't really have much behavior encapsulated within them. So that being said, it wouldn't really make sense to extract separate objects for your DTO and domain object because you're not gonna be getting any encapsulation benefits on the domain object side. So in the end, your domain object and your DTO are probably gonna look the same. So there's really not much benefit for having separate objects here. So overall, simple domains and anemic domain models, solid use cases for using the same class for your DTO and domain object. And keep in mind, like these are pretty common use cases. A lot of times we are working in simple domains where we're just doing CRUD stuff, and same goes for anemic domain models. Those are pretty popular approaches to domain modeling. Whether or not they're good or bad, we're not gonna go over in this video, but they are a popular thing out there. So moving on, when should you use a separate DTO class from your domain object? So opposite of what we just talked about, you'd wanna use a separate DTO class whenever you're working in a complex domain where your domain objects are doing a lot and you wanna encapsulate that logic within your domain objects. Because again, if you use the same class for your DTO and your domain object, it's gonna be very hard to encapsulate your domain logic within that single class without having to leak things out for the sake of your DTO and transferring the data between systems. Now, on the downside, you are gonna have more complexity. You are gonna have more objects, you're gonna have more mapping, but really you have to think about the trade-off. Is this mapping and is this complexity worth it for the sake of encapsulation for our domain objects. The other topic I wanna to bring up is that the systems that your data is moving between matters as well. So for example, DTOs that represent your REST API request and response objects, it might be worth representing those with separate DTO classes so that you don't inadvertently make changes to what you think is a domain object and then end up breaking the schema for your API and then having all of your clients get mad at you. So in summary, the two trade-offs to consider, do I wanna have a separate DTO class and increase complexity so that I can encapsulate domain concepts within my domain objects? And also, do I wanna have a separate DTO class so that I can make changes to my domain objects without worrying about inadvertently breaking how my data is transferred between systems? So think about these trade-offs in your own application because again, it all depends. I've worked on huge systems where the domain is kind of complex. And despite that, we would have a single API schema object that we would pass throughout our entire system, down through the domain, down to our data access layer, and everything was fine. Now, personally, I tend to lean towards DTOs most of the time, not because I enjoy overcomplicating things, but I feel like the benefits outweigh the drawbacks in most cases. I like having a separate DTO class that describes and enforces the data that gets transferred between systems. I like being able to modify my domain objects without having to worry about breaking how the data is transferred between systems. And honestly, I'm okay with having to maintain a separate object, multiple layers, and all the mapping associated with having a separate DTO class. Because actually, on the topic of layers and all of these other drawbacks, vertical slice architecture can kind of help us here. But we're not gonna get into vertical slice architecture here. That's a pretty big topic. I have a whole series on that and I'll link that in the description. But overall, hopefully you can apply these concepts and consider these trade-offs in your own application to determine whether or not you should have a separate DTO class.